hello everyone so now we have completed the chapter number 10 that is light reflection and refraction i hope you are clear with what is reflection what is refraction fine and we have also seen the concave mirror the convex mirror as well as the concave lens and a convex lens okay so now what we need to see is the human eye and the colorful world that is the new chapter a chapter number 11 okay generally this chapter is the continuation of chapter number 10 that was the ray optics but in this chapter we will see where we are using the daily day life of reflection as well as refraction okay so let's start the chapter the chapter number 11 the human eye and the colorful world you have studied in the previous chapter about refraction of light by lenses okay we also studied the nature the position the size of the image formed by the lenses yes we are clear about that if it was beyond x below the x axis it was real and inverted but it was behind the lens or behind the mirror it was virtual and erect fine the nature and size we saw that was a small diminished a point sized object enlarge infinity highly enlarged these were the sizes of the images formed when an object was kept at some sort of distance okay now so today we will help see that how the human eye uses light and enables us to see objects around us it as a lens in its structure as our human eye is said to be the world's best camera or say the natural camera we can ever see okay it have it is having the highest resolution possible and thus we can see the most nearby object as well as the far, most far by objects clearly okay so we will also see that what is the function of the lens in the human eye how do the lens used in the spectacles correct defects of vision fine so there are, as i told you earlier when we were solving about the convex lens and concave lens that they are used in the defects of eye of vision that means if you cannot see distant object clearly then we will be using certain lens whereas when we are using we cannot see the nearby objects clearly we are also using some sort of lens and when the age increases of a, any personal human being then we are using a bifocal lens or a cylindrical lens in our day to day life that we will see how they are made and how they work okay so our first topic is the human eye students as you have studied this earlier also in lower standards you please pay attention over here okay as it is quite important to us the human eye human eye is one of the most valuable and sensitive organ it enable us to see the wonderful world and colorful around us on the closing the eye we can identify objects to some extent by their smell taste sound they make or by touch it is however impossible to identify the color while closing the eyes thus of all the sense organs the human eye is the most significant at one as it enable us to see the beautiful colorful world around us fine so let us see the first the schematic diagram of a human eye as you can see over here the schematic di diagram of a human eye okay so the first thing is the cornea okay the first thing is cornea and you know students the light enters the eye through cornea okay the light enters the eye through cornea on an average human being the size of the eye is always 2.3 centimeter it is always 2.3 centimeter you can also see there is a crystalline lens over here okay the aqueous humor stands for a liquid is filled over in the human eye so that we can see things clearly there is also a pupil and iris the ciliary muscles the ciliary muscles are elastic in size uh, sorry elastic in nature and so that they can converge or diverge the things there is also a retina and the optic nose we will all see 
the functions of each and everything over here if it is asked in examinations then we need to draw this and then we need to explain the short note about it fine students so let us start that from the second paragraph over here the human eye is like a camera its lens system forms an image on a light sensitive screen called retina okay i hope you are clear with this its light its lens system forms an image on a light sensitive screen there is a sensitive screen in the human eye on which the object is formed and that is also known as retina you please tick that points these are the functions of the human eye light enters the eye through the thin membrane called cornea this can also be asked in an examinations that if the light enters the eye through a thin membrane it is known as cornea it forms the transparent bulge on the front surface of the eyeball yes students if you can see the, there is a bulging out that means our eye is slightly outside our human body fine and that is a transparent bulge on the front surface of the eyeball as i told you earlier the average human eye size is always 2.3 cm in diameter so we can see that the whole length of the human eye is always 2.3 cm in diameter you know the human eye is the only the human eye is the only object uh, only organ in a human body that cannot that does not grow from the birth to death the size of the eye remains same each and every time it is just the layer of the skin that opens up and closes whenever our age increases so you need to know that the human eye is the only organ in the human body that does not changes its shape when the age increases fine okay now we have also seen the reflection as the refraction two modes of light <coughs> fine so the most of the refraction for the light rays entering the eye occurs at the outer surface of the cornea so where does the refraction light take place it occurs on the outer surface of the cornea the crystalline lens merely provides the finer adjustment of the focal length required to focus objects at different distances on the retina now as you know what is focus using camera or a smartphone okay if we are concentrating the camera's lens on one thing everything gets blurred we can also say it as in portrait mode whenever you are using a phone so the same thing is happening in our human body or in a human eye whenever we are focusing on one particular thing the other things get blurred the other things get blurred and so that the crystalline lens are used for the adjustment of the focal length as you all know that if we want to see a far objects clearly we need to diverge our eyes fine and if we want to see a nearby objects clearly we need to converge our eyes so these are the basic regulations of eyes fine i hope you are clear with this so now what happens this crystalline lens is helping us to provide the adjustment of the focal length as well as for the focusing on a different distances remember students to see the far objects i need to diverge and for a small distances i need to converge okay now we find a structure called iris behind the cornea which is the structure find behind the cornea that is also known as iris that is also known as iris see over here they have given us the function of the iris iris is a dark muscular diaphragm that controls the size of the pupil so as i told you that our eyes converges and diverges according to the objects what we are seeing in nearby things okay so what is the element or what is the organ which is functioning like this to control the size of the pupil to control the size of the pupil so iris is a dark muscular diaphragm that controls the size of the pupil if asked in examinations for a true or false that iris is a dark muscular diaphragm and that is also used to control the size of the pupil then we will write true 
okay we will write true another thing if they are asking that iris is a dark muscular diaphragm that controls the size of dash then we need to write pupil okay and if they are asking us dash is a dark muscular diaphragm that controls the size of the pupil then we will write iris then we will write iris okay so what is the general function of pupil the pupil regulates and controls the amount of light entering into our eye okay you can see over here the pupil regulates the control and the amount of light see over here we are having a pupil fine the pupil is the main lens of white color that is being found in our eyes and in between of that there is a black color dot okay so that is the pupil and pupil controls the amount of light entering to our eye say for example if we are in a dark and somebody suddenly switches on the light our eyes gets closed by itself our eyes gets closed by itself this shows that the retina the pupil is regulating the control of amount of light that should enter into the our eye so it is quite automatic okay i hope you are clear with this and as we also that the image from beyond below the x axis is always real and inverted it was always real and inverted so the eye lens form an inverted real image of the object on the retina the eye lens forms an inverted real image of the object on the retina the retina is a delicate membrane having enormous number of light sensitive cells fine retina has a membrane which can sense the light as i told you that when we whenever we are in dark or sleeping and somebody switches on the very high amount of light our eyes gets closed so there is a delicate membrane which senses the light as soon as they sense the light they will act accordingly they know how to converge or diverge the focal lens fine i hope you are clear with this but what does these light sensitive cells do these light sensitive cells get activated upon illumination and generate electrical signals okay as we saw in electricity that there whenever the key that switch was kept on the electric signal was passing from a positive terminal to a negative terminal the same things happens over here whenever i see something it senses the object in front of us say it is our vehicle kept kept in front of us then we will memorize says yes it's r or it's our not okay the same way these light sensitive cells get activated upon the illumination and generate electrical signals and generate electrical signals these signals are sent to the brain via optic nerves please note that students the signals that is being generated by an op illumination of light they are sent to the brain using optic nerves as we seen the optic nerves over here these are the optic nerves through which a brain is being sensed that what type of element or what type of object or a human is kept in front of us okay i hope you are clear with this so these signals are sent to the brain via optic nerves the brain interprets these signals and finally processes the information so that we perceive object as they are okay i hope you are clear with this so what happens light enters the eye through the cornea okay the light sensitive cells are also known as retina the crystalline lens fine it is being controlled by iris and so the dark muscular control iris is a dark muscular diaphragm that also controls the pupil the crystalline lens is the same form of pupil we can control the uh, crystalline lens and pupil with the form of iris pupil also regulates and control the amount of light entering into the eye the pupil regulates and controls the amount of light entering into our eyes okay what was the basic uh, dimension of the human eye it is always 2.3 cm in diameter it is always 2.3 cm in diameter okay and then where the light was sent the eye always forms a real and inverted image of the object on the retina so you need to know that 
whenever it is asked in the examination that the island forms an inverted real image of the object on the retina. The retina is a delicate membrane having enormous number of light sensitive cells. The light sensitive cells get activated and it also generates electric signals. And now these electric signals are sent to the brain via optic nerves. Are sent to the brain via optic nerve. The brain interprets this signal and finally processes the information so that we perceive object as they are. We perceive object as they are. Okay. I hope you are clear with the human eye. Fine. See there is also one extra paragraph given over here. Let us read that. The damage to or malfunction of any part of the visual system can also lead to the significant loss of visual functioning. Fine. What they are telling us is that if there is a damage over eye, we can also lose our eyesight. And that is quite common if something is hitting hard on our type uh, on an eye organ then we can also lose the you we can also you lose the sight okay if any of the structures involved in the transmission of light like the corona pupil eye lens aqueous humor and vitreous humor what was vitreous humor and aqueous humor that was the liquid portion filled with eye that was the liquid portion filled with eye we can feel that our eye is always wet fine whenever we are touching the white or a black portion with our fingers so that the vitreous humor and aqueous humor are the liquid filled materials and those are responsible for the conversion of light to electrical signals fine that was not written in our, in our text, textbook but that you need to know that the aqueous humor and vitreous humor are always responsible for the conversion of light to electrical impulse. Conversion of light to electrical impulse like the retina or to even the optic nerve that transmits these impulses to brain. Okay. Like the retina or even the optic nerve that transmits the impulse to the brain is damaged, it will result to a visual impairment. Okay, so that if that optic nerves are also damaged, then we can see objects but we cannot recognize what is kept in front of us. This usually happens when the optic nerve gets damaged. This optic nerve gets damaged sometimes by the coma, stupor, etc. diseases when we are having a heart stroke on our brain. Okay. Next thing, you might have experienced that you are not able to see objects clearly for some time. When you enter from the bright light room to a dim light. Okay, so what they are telling us and yes, we have experienced that whenever we are out in a sunny days and when we enter our drawing hall, after sometimes we cannot see things clearly because the pupil is all not ready to accept the change what they are getting. Okay, so the pupil of an eye acts like a variable aperture whose size can be varied with the help of the iris. The pupil of an eye acts like a variable aperture whose size can be varied with the help of the iris. Okay, when the light is very bright, the iris contracts the pupil to allow less light to enter the eye. Okay, so here we can see that the iris is controlling the pupil and thus pupil allows the less light to enter through the eye. But however in dim light the iris expands the pupil to allow more light to enter the eye. Thus pupil opens completely through the relaxation of iris. Pupil opens completely through the relaxation of iris. Okay, I hope you are clear with the human eye students. It is very necessary to write in examinations with figure. So you please go through these things. Okay. If you are having any doubts, you can please let me know further. Fine. Next topic, the power of accommodation of eye. Now what is power of accommodation? Actually, the another name of power of accommodation is the focus. As I told you earlier, we can see up to some extent and we cannot see beyond some extent. Okay. And that depends on an individual human being. Everybody has their own watching or a sight or a visual capacity through which they can see things. Okay. But one thing is common that is the near point of the human eye. 
what is near point of the human eye here the word near point of the human eye stands for what things we can see which are very close to our eyes which are very close to our eyes and that is only 25 centimeter and that is only 25 centimeter fine so eye length is let us read here the power of accommodation the eye length is composed of a fibrous jelly like material its curvature can be modified to some extent by ciliary muscle okay so you need to remember that eye lens is a composed of fibrous jelly like material it is composed of fibrous jelly like material its curvature can be modified to some extent by the ciliary muscle its curvature can be modified to some extent by ciliary muscle fine as i told you that ciliary muscles are responsible for the stretching of the eyeballs okay the change in the curvature of the eye lens can thus change its focal length so ciliary muscles can also change the focal length or we can say that the ciliary muscles are responsible for the change in the focal length when the muscles are relaxed the lens become thin when the muscles are relaxed the lens become thin as you know when our eye is at a normal position fine and we are not focusing on anything then the human lens are thin thus its focal length increases this enable us to see distance object clearly so whenever you are keeping your eye lens thin when we can see far objects clearly as i told you we are diverging and we want to see a clear by things a near by things clearly then we need to converge our lens then we need to converge our lens fine the so it is written over here that this focal length increases this enable us to see the distance object clearly but whenever you are looking at objects closer to the eye the ciliary muscles contract this increases the curvature of the eye lens the eye lens then becomes thicker the eye lens then becomes thicker consequently the focal length of the eye lens decreases the focal length of the eye lens decreases this enable us to see nearby objects clearly this enables to see the nearby objects clearly okay so over here they have given us the definition of accommodation you need to write please go through it okay here they have given us the definition of accommodation the ability of the eye lens to adjust its focal length is called accommodation that is quite dependent on the ciliary muscles as the age increases the ciliary muscles get weak and thus we need to have the spectacles okay so what is the definition of accommodation i am repeating once again the ability of the eye lens to adjust its focal length is called accommodation so over here you can see that the ability of the eye lens to adjust its focal length is called accommodation means how our eye lens will adjust its focal length so that we can see anything that is distant or nearby clearly is known as accommodation is known as accommodation the focal length of the eye lens cannot be decreased below a certain limit the focal length of the eye lens cannot be decreased below a certain limit okay so the near point of the human eye is always 25 cm the near point of the human eye is always 25 cm see students they have written over here that to see an object comfortably and distinctly you must hold it at about 25 cm from the eyes okay fine i hope you are clear with this to see an object comfortably and distinctly you must hold it at about 25 cm from the eyes the minimum distance at which object can be seen without strain is called least distance of distinct vision distinct stands for clear vision over here and least distance stands for the nearby distance fine so what they have written over here the minimum distance at which objects can be seen most distinctly without strain is called least distance of the distinct vision 
it is also called the near point of the eye it is also called the near point of the eye for a young adult with a normal vision the near point is about 25 cm i hope you are clear with this okay for a young adult with a normal vision the near point is always about 25 cm okay and the farthest point up to which the eye can see objects clearly is also known as far point of the eye for a young adult human being the near point is always same the near point is always 25 cm okay after if you will keep an object near to 25 cm that is say example 20 cm 15 or 10 cm we cannot see things clearly we cannot see things clearly so we to get have a to have a thing clearly what we need to have is that should be minimum 25 cm away from the eyes okay and the farthest point up to which the human eye can see objects clearly is called the far point of the eye it is infinite for a normal eye okay so the for the far point it is infinity and the near point it is 25 cm and the near point it is 25 cm you may note here for a normal eye can see objects clearly between 25 cm and infinity 25 cm and infinity is the clear wavelength for a normal human eye okay i repeat 25 cm and infinity is the normal wavelength for a clear vision for a human eye so over here 25 cm is said to a near point or a distant a distinct vision of a near point and the far point is infinity far point is infinity sometimes the crystalline lens of people at old age becomes milky and cloudy this condition is also known as cataract students we have seen in our home that the old age people say our grandfathers or grandmother had an operation which we are after that they are wearing a black color sunglasses in our home fine what happens during that time so that time what happens the main thing is that on the layer of the eye there becomes a milky and cloudy that is a new layer is formed on the human eye due to the aging and thus they lead to the loss of the partial vision vision they lead to the loss of the partial vision and this condition is also known as cataract this condition is also known as cataract fine but if the surgery is not done completely this also causes partial or loss of complete vision it is possible to region vi uh, restore vision through a cataract surgery through a cataract surgery fine so a milky and a cloudy layer formed on a human eye is known as cataract the milky and a cloudy layer formed on a human eye is said to be cataract and this also causes a partial or a complete loss of vision okay i hope you are clear with the today's topic if you are having any doubt please let me know now we will continue for the defects of vision on the next lecture thank you